What's in a name? Google's new holding company, as well as its domain name, Alphabet.com, is already taken by someone else. It's owned by a German automaker that calls itself by a different set of letters, BMW. Joining us now to talk about the situation is Joan Salzman. She's senior reporter at CNET. So Joan, when I have an idea for a company, I usually go look up the domain name and see if it's available. Google didn't go to GoDaddy.com to see if they could, they could have that name? Well, considering Google is Google, I'm sure that they at least Googled what Alphabet.com <laughs> actually is. But the thing with Google is they're just so big and so powerful, they can sort of write their own rules. It's definitely the status now that it's required for people to, when they're starting a new company or entering a new business, to find out what that domain name is, what the social presence is for that Twitter handle, for example. But right. with Google, you can kind of write your own rules. For example, instead of going with alphabet.com, they went with that abc.xyz as their main website. So they don't, they're not going to write a big check. We used to see these big domain battles before where someone would sit on a name. You don't see a legal battle shaping up here. Well, the thing about legal battles, as anyone who's dealt with the court system before knows, is that it's a slow process. And anyone who's existed on the internet knows that's a very fast world. So there's definitely the possibility of a legal battle, but is it really in the best interest of Google and Alphabet now what they're trying to do? It might be, but it seems unlikely considering they seem to already be going another route with the other domain name that they've registered and the at Alphabet Inc. Twitter handle that they have instead. Uh, are we seeing more examples of this happening? I recall a couple of the presidential candidates apparently hadn't registered their own domain names and then found them taken. Right. I mean, everyone has had this experience where they might be coming to a social platform a little bit late and realize that, oh, my name, I can't get it anymore. I had that problem with Snapchat, for instance. There was some teenager who was much quicker than me and got my name before that I wanted to have it. It's definitely something that's affecting not just normal people, but companies, because it's a bit of a land grab when there's a new platform or a new business that wants to be on it. Somebody has more and more likely actually already gotten it. I've talked to source. I've talked to sources before who want to register their own name, but have found that there's a company in Portugal that already mm -hmm. has the name that they want. But what companies seem to be doing, especially smaller companies, ones that aren't the size of Google, is going around the obstacle rather than trying to hammer through it. Thinking of some other alternative way to spell their name or including an ink at the end of it, like Alphabet has done with its Twitter handle, that's a way to get around the problem rather than having to get into a lengthy and possibly expensive legal battle. So for folks who are squatters, I, I had someone who was squatting on my name, in fact, on Twitter for oh, no. an awful long time. They didn't have any followers. They didn't do anything oh, no. with it. I think they were basically trying to see if I would pay them for it. Um, right. I finally got my own name. Uh, are we still seeing people doing that kind of holding domains hostage and asking for ransoms, or is that kind of a thing of the past? I think it's definitely happening, but I think as the internet is becoming more pervasive, it's more complicated, as there are just simply more domain address endings, it's not just a .com game anymore, there being .net, .xyz, there's more options available. So the squatters are going to be there. Wherever there's an easy buck to be made, of course there's going to be people taking advantage of it. And it's going to be piecemeal whether or not it actually works out for them. For example, with Twitter, it's technically not in accordance with their terms of service to buy and sell or barter uh, a Twitter handle. But of course, as we all know, it happens. <laughs> there's a black market for it. There's the always a market for yeah. everything. When there's easy money, <laughs> someone's going to try to get it. So there's definitely the squatters, but the great news for people that have to run into those squatters is that there's other options other than just handing over, forking up a bunch of money. All right, Joan Salzman, thanks so much for joining us. Joan Salzman, senior reporter at CNET, and thanks you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Hey YouTube fans, I'm Landon Dowdy from CNBC. Thanks so much for checking out our channel. Here you'll find videos packed with all the info that you need to be smarter about your finances. Be sure and subscribe by clicking right here and click on all the videos around me to see CNBC's original series, Young Money, Tech Bet, Kramer's Mad Money, and all the latest from CNBC.